So guys, now we are trying to, this is the begin example, and we're trying to figure out when uh, the pump is going to work because this is the load file and this says the pump when it is going to function. And as we see from the documentation, we have this here and it says that from zero to eight, so from midnight until eight in the morning, the function is zero. So it means that it's not working. It's then it's working again from eight to six p.m. and then it the function is zero again from six to midnight again. And we need to make five points. Um, okay, like this. So we are going to go in our example that we are trying to build. Go inside here <coughs> and put five points. I know this is a bit confusing. I even me haven't understand it very well so far. So the initial value is zero from zero. And then you go to eight o'clock with the function zero. Then it's <laughs> to eight o'clock with function one until 18 with also function one. Then it's 18 with function zero until 24 with function zero. And then it goes all over again. So we have from zero o'clock until eight o'clock with the function zero, then from eight o'clock to six o'clock with function one, and then from six o'clock until midnight with a function zero. So this actually tells when, tells the pump when it should function and like it's controlling the signal, it's controlling when the pump is on and off. Um, something else, I think we have done all the connections here. Yeah. Uh, ah, yeah, what we haven't done is just make all these connections to this pre integrator, which is important sometimes in way more complicated projects. So uh, this, <coughs> this component here integrates and prints the result. So we're going to put, um, let's say, six, for example, and we have six sockets here. But let us check the begin example and see how many uh, parameters, just two, it's just the energy of the collector and the energy coming from the auxiliary heating. So I just put too many of them. So, but this is easy to change. For example, input, I'm just going to put oop, two. Yeah, it's easier to write here on uh, energy from the solar collector or easier QSC and accordingly the heating that comes from the energy from <laughs> the auxiliary so I'm gonna name this QAUX so as we see, this is a plus and this is a minus because this is that we gain and this is what we have to spend from our own electricity. So I'm going to connect also this one with this integrator. So the required heating rate is this one. Let me check the first con so the first connection. Yeah, it's the temperature. It shouldn't. Okay. So. And as we said, we're going to customize that we can see that when we see a green line and green dashed line, that means that it goes to the printer greater, to the in, to the printer anyway. Oops. So copy and apply the same here. So this is it. This is the first example. Now the moment of truth. Now we're going to have to see if it works. So we're going to go here to the run. As we see, transit takes time. I think it also depends on your computer and on your RAM. So. 
We are very fortunate we didn't get any error. As we see here, we have outlet, outlet, outlet. We don't have any idea what are these. Required, power, required, power, required. So, what what should we do here? This is the ohm lamp. What we saw before is the result of this one. So we can go here and see that we have five axes here, five axes here. But I think we don't use all of them. So they are used just three of them and three more. So it's better to go to the assembly, output manager, and here have these two. These two are free. So we are going to go here and then that we want only three variables on these axes and accordingly we want three. Of course you can put as many as you want. It's it's better for you. Now we saw that the, this was just outlet. So we couldn't understand what what were we seeing. So as we see in the left axis variable one is the auxiliary heating. The temperature. <laughs> so I'm gonna name this T out uh, aux. So now I know this is the outlet temperature from the auxiliary heater. And accordingly, I'm gonna do this is the pump T out pump. Here we have the solar collector te outlet temperature. T out solar collector required heating so Q AUX uh, yeah that's it this is the power consumption uh, I can just put let it like that pump and finally from SC so as I said before we have here the axis and let's say we want to add some more we're gonna go here we can press this one to add from the left as you see that uh, the red line and or to add some variable on the right axis with this red line on the right side so let's add on the left side one variable more and we want let's say to add from the pump I want the mm, not I want the dry bulb temperature for example so we're gonna go to the this component weather data component and then to the dry bulb temperature we have already clicked this then we go to the dry bulb temperature and we just press this arrow as you see it moves automatically in this path but you have to be careful because now it has the the initial um, label so you have to label it now before you forget it so I'm gonna put weather data dry bulb T and accordingly you can do all the rest now if I don't want any more the T out C uh, the outlet of the collector I can delete it but then this doesn't move automatically to spot three. So I have to move it by hand or that's just me that I haven't found a better method yet. Please, if you have something, you can all tell me. And here, as we can see, we have these, we see that we have named them properly. So we don't have any problem there. Now let's run again the simulation. As you can see here, I have nope, we won't see it. We have the I'm going to fade them all out and bring them back one by one. So this is the outlet temperature from the auxiliary heater. This is the pump outlet which is very normal because it takes it from the source from the company that is providing the water and it's at a certain temperature this is the outlet temperature from the uh, from the sun 
as we see at some point they are like if we zoom in here we can see that here's the sun so the auxiliary heating is not working but here that is colder than let's say 24 we see the auxiliary heating working and it's above the temperature that it's out so it coming it's coming out from the um the solar collector at this temperature the purple one and then uh, here it is going and the auxiliary heating is starting working and here is the dry bulb temperature and then <coughs> here we can see the um the energy that we get from the solar collector which is kind of normal because this is time of the day Here we see that it's not the the power, no, the energy from the auxiliary heating, and this is the power of the pump. It's not shown very well. Yeah, it's need a bit of zooming. Okay, so the pump is working only in this situation. So during the night the pump doesn't work because there is no need for that. So we're gonna close it. Now I'm going to show you what the printer creator does. It's really simple. Uh, you should check the parameters and just play with them. I even I don't know all of them, of course. Uh, so you have to check the documentation on everything. It's very helpful and very useful, and I advise you to do so. So once we have put the in the printer creator the variables we want, then we want to take them from the printer from the printer part. As you can see, this is called these stars dot out. Of course, you can always change the name, and I'm gonna put energies. Of course, then close it. Then, in order for that change to become, um, then for that change to become, I need to rerun the simulation. Don't worry, it's running. I just have faded out everything we checked that um, so now we will see in the external files in the edit when we press it please come on anyway it takes a little bit of time in my computer because it's a bit slow so anyway what we want to do is just now that we ran the simulation we're gonna go to the double click in this component and then to the external file and then edit open it with notepad usually or notepad plus plus so here we have um, yeah this is a bit shifted so anyway, we have here the period and in this period we have it working. So I'm not sure if I have done all the connections right, you should double check. But this is what you get and this is what you will have to check for your projects or what you're doing right, if the energy balance is right and all that kind of stuff. No, I don't want to save it. So this is it, guys. Uh, please let me know if you have any question. Oh, yeah. Can you see this arrow here? Is that it? Because we did it on the assembly before. And this arrow was created automatically. Now, how? Um, on the next episode, I'm going to show you how to deal with errors on of course on simple things and how to check and modify your project i hope you find these videos useful and i hope i can help you and i'm helping you starting your projects with transits etc you can you can find down in the description some links i found from some video lectures from chris bales i'm sure there you can find them on internet as well but i thought why not just put the links down 
in the description. So till next time, bye guys.